NASA has been able to see with this year's El Nino. It has definitely put its fingerprint on this winter's weather, influencing extreme events from tornadoes to blizzard. And a group with a different view than we have had is NASA. We have satellite images to show the impacts of El Nino. And here to talk about it is Leslie Ott. She's a scientist at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, uh, Maryland. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. First of all, what images can you see some, from space? What perspective are you seeing on El Nino? So satellites give us a really unique perspective. So we can see the, the broad perspective of El Nino and how it's affecting weather across the tropical Pacific all the way to the United States. What you're seeing here is the temperature anomaly, the warm water in the equatorial Pacific. That warm water is actually large enough and strong enough as a heat source to affect the positions of the jet streams, which affects our weather here at home. So it's kind of an amazing yeah. big picture phenomenon that's affecting things all the way from Indonesia to the east coast of the United which States. Which is what we need to see. We need to see that warm water. I mean, you know, everyone says just because Southern California didn't get rain, it wasn't a strong El Nino, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, have you seen any environmental changes uh, with this El Nino? Yeah, you know, one of the big things we look out for every El Nino year is uh, intense drought in Indonesia and as a result, really strong fires. And this is a, it's not just a local problem. This is actually a regional to a global air pollution problem. And that's something we've seen this year. Here we're looking at precipitation anomalies. So the, the red is telling you when you have below normal precip and the blue is telling you when you have more rainfall than usual. And you can see over Indonesia and the maritime continent, really, really dry conditions. Also wetter than normal conditions mm -hmm. in the uh, Eastern Pacific. Speaking of dry, a lot of people were hoping that this El Nino would help with the drought in California. It, it seems like it hasn't even really made that much of a dent even into northern California where we've been you know benefiting from some of the rains yeah there, there has been an increase in the snowpack uh, in, in northern California which is a good thing I think it was a bit overly optimistic to hope that one wet winter one El Nino season was going to make up for the deficit we were about 20 inches below mm. normal rainfall over the past Jeez. few years. And so really that, there was no possibility of being to right. able to make that up in one year. And frankly, you wouldn't want to. You don't want all True. that rain at once. It, so we, we, wouldn't uh, be able to we would have hoped it. for a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. Nope. No. Um, all right. So are we trending now more towards a neutral phase or a La Nina phase? And what would then that mean for everybody? So the short answer is we're not quite sure. The models right now are forecasting uh, a breakup of this El Nino and a trend towards cooler temperatures. Um, there are some models that are forecasting uh, us to go into a El Nino. There are some that forecast us to just go into a neutral phase. So we'll probably know more in a few months. Okay. This time period is a little bit tricky to forecast. Yeah. But uh, with a La Nina, we could see drier and uh, warmer conditions in the southern United yeah, States. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the whole, you know, ocean <laughs> trying to figure out what it wants to do. It, <laughs> it's kind of a big thing. Yeah. Right. Just, just Little minor detail. All right, Leslie, thank you so much. I really enjoyed speaking with you.